In today's Sharp Saturday video, we're gonna take a look at a knife I've been wanting to check out for a while now, the Cold Steel Coban. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me for another Sharp Saturday video. And it's uh, kind of drizzling rain here, so I hope we're gonna be able to finish this one. But um, as I said, today we're gonna take a look at this really cool cold steel Coban, kind of a uh, Japanese style knife. Had my eye on this one for a while. And we're gonna talk about it, do a little knife test, and maybe even try to get a little wet weather fire thing going here with this. But first, as always, a big thank you to the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited for making these sharp Saturday videos possible. I actually bought this knife from Big Daddy Unlimited. And the way they uh, help the channel is that if you join Big Daddy Unlimited for a 30-day trial membership for just 99 cents, That'll let you get behind the paywall, so to speak, where they can where they can show you prices that are too low for them to, to advertise. And um, if you think it'll, it's going to be a good deal for you and you're gonna, it's going to save you money, then you stick around and pay the regular $10 a month or $100 a year membership fee, then they'll throw me a couple of bucks. I've been a member now, a paying member, for about three years, and I save money every single year. Um, I, I save more money than my membership costs me. If it makes sense for you, it'll help support the channel, so it's a win-win for everybody. Now, let's... Uh, talk about the specs of this thing and get to doing some nice stuff before the rain sets in. So my notes are getting wet here, so uh, let's, get, let's get going with this. So first of all, as I said, this is the Coban. Let's try to give you some close-ups of this thing. It features a five and a half inch uh, American Tanto style blade, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, of 3.5 millimeter thick satin finished OS 8 steel. Uh, this one is the smooth edge version. It's also available in a fully serrated version with some really funky serrations, to be honest with you. A four and three eighths inch deeply checkered Cray X handle. They like their names. It's got a nice uh, sleeved lanyard hole in it. Um, it has a nine and seven eighths inch overall length, and this is super lightweight knife. Weighs just 4.4 ounces. It comes with this uh, Secure X sheath. <laughs> like I said, they like those names. Pops in there really well, and it's got this uh, adjustable belt clip. You can move it up and down a little bit if you want to move it around. But um, it's, uh, it's, this actually fits really well in a molly or goes on your belt or whatever. You slide it in your pocket, however you want to do it. I guess you could put it in a boot. It's a very versatile design, I think. And, and, if, and if it's in there, let me show you really, really well. So Secure X is a good name for it. Just push out. The MSRP in this thing is 65 bucks. I paid 34 bucks for it. $33.99 on Big Daddy Unlimited. So really good deal there. Um, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what they're calling the American Tonto Blade. And what that means is the uh, the spine of this knife, if you can look at the, the profile on it, it goes almost to the very tip. So it's not a, lot of, not a lot of thinness here, which makes it really strong for piercing and, and different tasks like that. And I gotta say, I don't know if I can get you a good enough close up on this or not where you can see it, but, but the, uh, like always, can you kind of see that? Man, the grind is really, really even on this thing. Um, there's that side. Every cold steel knife I've ever looked at, no matter what the price, has been a really, really well, well-made, well-designed knife. This has got a really grippy little uh, kind of a tapered kind of handle with a built-in finger guard there. It really does feel really good in your hand. Um, it's, um, I think it's a hollow grind, very sharp. Nice little sharp sharpening choil there. So uh, that is what a choil should look like, in my opinion, for the most part. Kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a uh, kind of a concave there. Um, it, it just, man, it is so lightweight. I kinda, it's just so lightweight. It feels really good in your hands. So really, it feels useful. So you want to find out how useful? Let's see. So we're going to do the redneck sharp test. And like I said in a recent video, I have mowed the uh, testing medium down with a pair of clippers to try to get it even because it's had all these patches. I didn't realize how hairy my arms were. But we're gonna try, I'm just gonna get it up here like this and see if you can see this and see if this thing will help pass as a sharp test. And <laughs> of course it does. I mean, that, I just really can't say anything bad about cold steel. They just seem like a really, everyone I've looked at has been a really good value. They've been really sharp from the factory. In fact, let's just check, oh, we didn't check that part out. Let's check that part out now and see if it's, oh my gosh, man, it's sharper maybe than the, oh man, I'm gonna cut myself with that, I'm not careful. It's sharper than this part. So that's the redneck sharp test, passed with flying colors. 
How about cutting some damp paper, which is, <laughs> I don't even like the paper cut test. You know that, but, but some people want to see it. But when it was damp paper, it's going to be even harder, I think. Well, let's just see. I'm just going to hold it with my little fingers here. and, and Look at that, man. It's, until it hits the water. This is some really damp paper. Yeah, it's real damp. So, I don't have any big rope and stuff to slash and cut like Lynn would have, but anyway, so we're gonna call it a pass because the paper's wet. So I'm going to take one for the team, sit my rear end down in my wet little chair here, take you down to the old stump top, and we'll get to doing a little carving stuff. Now, this, to be fair, this is not a bushcraft knife, okay? But I'm gonna try to be consistent, consistent with my testing, and we're probably gonna get all scientific with this one. Since we didn't with the Randall knife. <laughs> Okay, here's the uh, Coban. By the way, Coban is uh, named from a, uh, this, this, the name Coban is taken from the Japanese underworld, like the uh, uh, <laughs> Yakuza, and Coban's like a name kind of for, for one of the, some, somebody that takes a blood oath or something, I don't know. So anyway, it's been raining here for a couple of days in Georgia. So what I thought I'd do was, this is a, a piece of wood like you might find uh, in the forest. <laughs> But it is a piece of wood. Okay, let's be fair. It's a piece of a two by four. But I've been laying out here on the ground in the rain. So I thought this would be a good um, opportunity to, to test the validity of, of uh, or maybe even necessity for batoning. So I got my baton here. And again, one of the purposes for batoning is to get into the center of some wood that maybe is wet so you can get some dry wood going for a fire. So I think this is a good opportunity to test that. And this is a, uh, I believe it's kind of, feels like a full tang around this over molded handle. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how well she takes a beating. And look at the water oozing out of the end of that. So you know this is wet, okay? You know it is, it's not. So the, what we're trying to do is get down to the inside here so we can get a fire started. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna split this half out here. And let's put this down one more time here. And, oh, oh, don't get yourself, Brian. That should give us some dry wood here to try to carve some, some curls out of, which is what I'm gonna do now. Let's just see how well this thing carves. Oh, man, cause I, I know it's gonna carve great because it's really a, it just, you can tell, man, it feels great. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. It's got a heck of an edge on it. And really, just to show you this edge, it's got, just a little bit of a belly on it. So it's not completely flat. It's a nice little bow there. Man, great. I'm trying to leave this on the stick so it doesn't lay on this wet stump top and, get, and soak up any of this moisture that's on the surface of this wood because it's raining right now even a little bit. Sprinkling. Man, this thing carves like nobody's business. And again, it's not even really what it's, it's not even a bushcraft knife what it's designed for. It's really probably more of a combat knife or fighting knife, but it's got a great edge on it. So, not too shabby, I don't think. That's pretty cool. So, now, like I said, I'm gonna try to leave it on there, like so. Um, I'm gonna go to, to my storeroom and get my, uh, take my fat wood out of storage, <laughs> which basically I just picked it up off the ground. Here's a small piece I cut off of it. I'll put this one back in storage. We'll, we'll, we'll work with a smaller piece. I'm just gonna carve off a little bit of that. And you can see that it's wet, okay? You can see that it's wet. So I wanna see how well the back of this thing scrapes, first of all. I don't know that it's gonna scrape very well. It doesn't feel really, really super, um, super sharp, but let's just see. Not great. Not great, but uh, so let's see. We got a little fat wood there. Let's carve a few fat wood curls off of here. I want to give ourselves the, the best chance to get a fire going here. So I want to put these fat wood curls kind of in all inside here in this little bundle of stuff I got going on here. Then I want to try to get some, some, some fat wood scrapings now. I'm gonna try to. <laughs> Trying to keep them on the stick too. As much as possible. I'm 
to put them right down here on top of that. Put these on there. Since it is raining, we'll see if I can get into the, we'll try out this uh, American Tonto and see how tough it is. If I can get into the, okay, to the center of this. Okay, there we go. Put you back in storage. Carb the wet off. Don't waste it, it's good fat wood even if it's wet. Let's try to scrape a little bit more here. Then we got a corner to scrape on. Some dry fat wood. Let me cut that off. All right. Put them in there, fluff them up just a little bit so they, they can catch. Now, for the moment of truth. If you don't believe me it's raining, that's my sheath now. Laying there, got water on it. Let's see if we can get us a fire going right here with this. We're gonna to try to scrape this ferro. This is my uh, Exotech Fire Rod XL. Let's just see. Not a lot. Get back, Kuma. Not really sharp. Um, I don't wanna use the blade because, oh, there we go, the very tip up here. So let's try that. It's really hard to um, get a grip on it. I don't want to cut my hand and try and do it like this. Oh, oh, we might have it. She's going, she's going, she's going. Look at there, let's see. We got it going, let's get it, get it on going up. And the fat wood's falling off, but I believe we got our curls fully involved now. And looky there, there you go. And now they go, so yes, yes. So I think we could get a fire going like that. What do you think? Okay, well, I gotta say the uh, Coban so far it has not disappointed me. Um, it uh, passed the redneck sharp test with flying colors. It um, did a really good job of carving, excellent job of carving. Um, the spine is not sharp, it's not sharp. It's really, it's sort of sharp, but this little part right up here has got enough edge on it to really strike really well a ferro rod. It's just so far up there, it's hard to get enough control, but it worked. We were able to get it done, um, baton through some, some two by fours, uh, and, and hopefully a little reasonable demonstration of why I think batoning is a good skill and technique to be able to be able to do and I think it's important that your knife uh, any knife you're going to depend on needs to be able to do that so that's, anyway that's my opinion so didn't do any chopping with it because it's not really a chopper but other than that I'd say it did really well uh, I could, you can sharpen that spine up with a, with a little file pretty simply a little all you need is a little spot so anyway um, that's all the practical stuff but as you know, here at Survival on Purpose, we're all about the science, and to that end, we maintain a state-of-the-art cutting-edge knife testing facility at our worldwide headquarters here. And one of the uh, tests we like to do with all fixed blades is the aerodynamic balance test using the balance orientation and rotation device. So we're gonna do that now because this one's screaming to be balance tested. I gotta get Kuma back here out of the way because he's not really a scientist, you know what I mean? So come here, Kuma, good boy. So let's try it and see, shall we? Got to use the proper scientific method, always. Whoop, 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 whoop. Ooh, well, <laughs> it was not properly calibrated, but it did do a little damage to the balance orientation and rotation device. Shall we try again? aim seems to be off a little. One more time. Oh, a little better, still kind of right. Move Kuma, come here, go. I gotta watch Kuma. Oh, no, you can't get the knife. One more time. Whoop, 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 whoop. Man, <laughs> that's so much fun, I wanna do it again. Come here, come here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good boy. 
Okay. <laughs> Kimmel won't stop chasing it, so we're going to call it balanced. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to call this one balanced, and I got to say, it's a joy to balance test this knife. It just, like, it wants to fly straight. So that's the Cold Steel Coben, and this one, I'm going to call a success. I really like this knife. It's uh, super lightweight, so it's very convenient to carry. The sheath is, is like I said, very, um, it's very versatile for the sheath. Very good sheath. Nothing fancy about it. It's a, but a very versatile, functional sheath. But I just like the the, the, the very lightweight functionality of this thing. It's super light, but yet super strong. I really like that American Tonto tip, they're calling it. And just a great knife design. If you're looking for a good all-around knife, maybe a good self-defense knife, or just a good all-purpose knife, this could be a good choice for you. Again, I bought mine on Big Daddy Unlimited for like 34 bucks. That's the cheapest price I could find it for um, at the time I bought it. So that's there's that. Um, this one's made in Taiwan, and uh, I think the folks at Cold Steel are still putting out really, really good stuff. People were concerned about that when you know, Lynn Thompson sold the company, but I think they're putting out good stuff. So anyway, that's today's Sharp Saturday video. I hope this has been helpful. I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.